biggest sort of headline really is that Mantor uh, mm. died um, uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, absurd 1995 WWF gimmick where they made him uh, half man, half bull. A yes. minotaur. Um, billed as being from the Isle of Crete. Which <laughs> <laughs> it's such a way, it's, I presume Crete's got a big minotaur. Population. Population. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you know, Crete is that sort of thing of, you know, Greek antiquity. Swear all and, of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, look, there's every chance that the Minotaur tale took place on Crete. But nobody remembers it. If, you, if you're worried about where the Minotaur tale took place. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's not true. And, and modern day as well, the Isle of Crete. You're just like. <laughs> it's where my mum, my mum's been on holiday three times. Yeah. And three times she went to Crete. Yeah, exactly That's that. It. Malta, Crete. Some same guy place. from Malta, you know, has come over. Um <laughs> We know with like, you know, time passing, we know that this gimmick can be done because mm. it's been done so well by the Lucha Libre star Black Taurus. Mm. And Black Taurus, basically, I don't think he looked at Mantor and went, how can I, this be done? I, I, how, how can, can this, this be, be done? done? Well, don't have a head that's taller than your head. That was it. Just wear a mask that's like a mask that you can see through and you can wear it throughout the match. He's a guy called Mike Halak and he was a big dude. Mm. And you, you, uh, the, one of the matches that I watched today was a match from Superstars where he takes on Razor Ramon in about 1995. Mm. And you can see that they're going to have to work a way of ending this match without Razor doing the Razor's Edge because there's no way he's going to get this big lump up. Yeah. But the problem is when he had that big bull's head on, which was so big that the neck covered his shoulders. Mm. You were just like, that bull's got a little body. Yeah. A little, a little body bull. And uh, even the boss of WWE, uh, Vince McMahon, as you all know uh, him as, he he is, he is could not be less interested no. in this product that he's just created. He, yeah. he, he comes out, it's his debut, and he went, oh, what's this then? Within... <laughs> 30 seconds, he's talking about Harvey Whippleman versus Finkel in a tuxedo match. <laughs> like, he's got no interest in the character he's just created. Yeah. Because he knows he's fucked it. There's there's a bit where, um, I, I think it's in the, the commentary I was watching, it might have been mm, Jim Cornette. Mm. And somebody sort of says something along the lines of, um, I mean, he's like he's like a sort of like a minotaur. And Vince goes, uh, half bull, half man. A, a mythical creature, certainly. From and Malta. So, so is he <laughs> is he mythical? So he's, he's not actually a man who's doing this <laughs> he's actually the minotaur is he he's, he's the i noticed well it's spelt mantor but they do pronounce it manta 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 well <laughs> <laughs> but he was known as bruiser mastino he'd had a long european career when they brought him in um he did have another couple of roles again with wwe and they just they'd given him this mantor gimmick and then they'd sort of gone well, this is rubbish mm. and sort of slightly almost like blamed him for it <laughs> he then came back as a bodyguard uh, uh to uh, do you know i can't even a gold dust he had one mm. match where he's Gold Dust's bodyguard, and he basically stops. He can't even stop Gold Dust's body being guarded. He just gets knocked over, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and it's pointless in being there. And they get rid of him after that. And then he was really, really briefly a masked member of the um, Truth Commission, a sort of South African tinged uh, group who right. were around in '97. And he had a big mask over his head, like a sort of like black leatherette mask. But they they basically sort of got rid of him right at the start as well. Whatever happened, he could never get a sort of grip on Fair, yeah. what it was. But he was big he and was. he could have done something. He was. He was quite short. Right. Um, and I think that there was a sense of going, you are faintly ridiculous with your, you know, when he, when the ball head comes off as well, he's got a very round little head like a pea. Yeah. And it, it somehow isn't intimidating. <laughs> well, I think the pictures that have been sort of circulated as he died, um, the eye makeup is, it yeah. just doesn't look all yeah. back. Yeah. Are, are you a mythical monster or have you spent a long time applying makeup? <laughs> and that sort of like, you know, just distracts you a bit. Um, he didn't really have very much to do with wrestling once he went back to Europe. He was Bruiser Mastino for a while, but he didn't really ever have a, a, mm. another run. Um, he did make a return at Joey Janela's Spring Break 3 show over one of the WrestleMania weekends. Um, that Those two nights of those shows, those Spring Breaks, are probably the best Spring Breaks uh, in history. From 2019, mm. lots of good stuff. And he was in what was known as the Clusterfuck Battle Royal, where they just brought in loads of people. Mm. And he made an appearance. And for some reason, he... he he, I was going to say he milked, but that's not what we do with bulls. No. But he milked his entrance so much that it took about sort of 10, 12 minutes for him to make it from the dressing room to the ring. Mm. And this is in a small building. And it was boring. <laughs> and somehow, after all these years, you were like, hey, it's Mantar. Hilarious. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliantly brought him back. You oh, were a bit like, so oh, this is the kid. most Mantar I've ever watched. And <laughs> I don't want to see it. Longer than all of his matches. But yeah, look, as they say, he also served. So uh, Mantar has gone up to the great big 
mythological uh, maze in the sky uh, yeah. where he is going to be reunited with his bull bottom half and his yeah, I guess human it, top. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. Maybe he has a human top that he takes off and underneath there's a bull. A that bull. is good. <laughs> that is so Th- That's a gimmick I would see. I would watch. <laughs> if it came down to the ring as a man but was actually a bull, now that is wrestling money, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Big wrestling money. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of people here. Thank you very much to everyone who got on. Uh, John Noon. I hope I get a picture of Jade sat on a bin. Oh. Uh, me too. <laughs> me too. Somebody asked if it's a George the Animal Steel figurine in the background of uh, my video. It is. I bought it. It, it was hairier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's quite horrible. But my little dog Sammy keeps eyeing it up, and I, I'm one day I'm going to let him have it. Yeah. It's it's an unpleasant thing to touch, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It's, yeah. If you if it was dark and you felt like there was someone standing next to your bed and you reached out. Out and you felt that you'd just be like, "Oh, it's, it's mm. a murderer." Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. the uh, The big thing I've seen on Twitter today has been the Undertaker uh, and his witless scaring of a shark. Right? Yeah, he scared a shark. Did he though? No. Well, he. Was, what happened? Was, he was there. Yeah. Looking at the sea. His wife. His wife saw what she thought was a shark, and and all of the reporting in the papers is like he <laughs> he stepped between his wife, who was on the beach, and the shark that was in the sea to basically sort of like go. Don't look at my wife. <laughs> Don't look at my wife. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just a it's... shock. Just... I mean, it's just lumps. It's just lumps above the water. Well, you don't even know that it's definitely a shark. It just look. It's just flopping around and yeah. like take us. Like, yeah. I, I, I like the way the first thing he's doing is going. I'll get out there. You know. <laughs> just. I'll get my. Look, I'll get my knees. Look, I'll, I'll get my knees replaced. Of course, the shark is going to swim away. Yeah. Like in the shallow water, right? But it's not but where he lives. A, you're stressing it out. B, yeah. It's like you'll go back and just go. Looks like a shark was no match for me. <laughs> Take it down to the trench. Yeah. Take it down to a big trench. Yeah. Uh, I look, it would have been hilarious if it had dragged him off. Yeah, it, it would have been. been. How did how brilliant. did how did Undertaker die? <laughs> how did Mean he Mark was taken die? He was by trying a to be small shark. He was trying to be mean to a baby shark. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> the best thing is, you know, that the story would have been reported very differently by his grieving widow, and she wouldn't have gone. Well, I saw a shark, and he was like, "Stay away from my woman," and he stood in the water. She'd be like, "You know, we were just in the water, and it came out of nowhere." <laughs> the hubris of knowing yeah. that he's just fronting up to marine predators. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all he's got left. And speaking of uh, his worst uh, match uh, in his history against Roman Reigns, uh, at the end of this broadcast, uh, Banya Bass done a video about it. Oh, that you can watch wonderful. That we can all enjoy. A wonderful, the, the biggest sort of hit of the last uh, two weeks, mm. which is Blue Kane. Blue Kane. Now, I follow a few wrestling accounts on my own personal one, and mm. WrestleMe obviously follows a lot more. But I have... I keep seeing this Blue Cairn guy. Uh, th- there was a show that took place uh, at the venue which is closest to my house, Tufnell mm. Park Dome, yeah. in Tufnell Park in North London. And <laughs> it was a fundraiser for a, a, a place called Lost Boys Pizza, mm. which I'm sure I've taken you to before, the one in Tufnell Park. Right. And it was the victim of arson a few weeks ago. Right. Completely, you know, gutted. Mm. And the uh, there was a, a fundraising show done by the wrestlers uh, at the Tufnell Park Dome to put them back on their feet. And it was called Slam and Pine Grapple. Right, okay, so I understand why that was called that now. Good, yeah. good. I, I, the name, it made me very cross. <laughs> slam, <laughs> was and, p- slam and... Pine Grapple. Pine Grapple. It's ham and pineapple, it, and it was obviously yeah. a pizzeria benefit. Uh, it didn't make that clear they enough. They didn't need the grapple in there, to be honest. No, uh. slam and pineapple is fine, and ham and pine... No, pine grapple is annoying. It really is <laughs> annoying. Um, but... Tre- tremendous thing to have done, you know, really good, and they are a business, you know, a business that do deserve to be helped out. Mm. So good for them. In the show, Jerry Blackwell is a masked wrestler. Uh, he is uh, uh, one of the least talked about, most enjoyable British wrestlers around, um, and he has a tweed mask with a moustache built into it. Right, and he does a bit of patter. And he's got, he moves like an old fashioned wrestler. He's got that very William Regal, sort of the arms go up and the feet do a little shuffle. Yeah. And he's really, really good on the mic. And he's a, a fun, a really fun performer. And he did a thing where he said, did an open challenge to the back to anyone who wanted to come out. And he said, no one could beat me, you know, uh, until hell freezes over. At which point, the debut of Blue Kane. Blue Kane. Um, it, it, <laughs> Blue Kane, very quickly, became. I would say the single most over British wrestler <laughs> since Will Ospreay. Um, 
it, it, it's <laughs> honestly been a fortnight since he debuted at that tiny show that people do not know about. <laughs> he came out, he's, he's Kane, but he's blue. Right, and yeah, yeah, yeah. he did, when the fireworks went off, he clicked his fingers and where Canes used to shoot fire, for blue cane, <laughs> snow came down from the ceiling. He, he's the it's opposite of Kane. It's good That's stuff. all it is. Um, <laughs> he doesn't like red cane at all. He makes that very clear on Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> which is also funny. Um, but it's got over to the point where, like Matt Cardona has said, somebody book me against blue cane. Um, mm. Other people, like Steph Delander, who works with Matt Cardona, is basically sort of just going, what, what on earth is blue, blue cane? Cane, yeah, and everyone is to some degree talking about, about blue, blue cane. cane. Is it like when like Scorpion in the uh, not Double Dragon, what's it called Mortal Kombat? Mm. Scorpion is just a palette swap for Sub Zero. Yeah, he basically blue fits yellow. in with that kind of video gamey kind of thing. Yeah, and look, this has been is done a over red the one years. As well, I think there might have been a red one. You've had like your Undertaker <laughs> versus your fake Undertaker. You know, mm. they've done that. This mm. is funny because it doesn't involve WWE at all. <laughs> It, it's an odd thing because Britain, of course, does have a history of tribute shows. And those mm. tribute shows in the 2000s, when the business was in the toilet, were, you know, the uh, Kent Rock. Yeah. You know, the uh, uh, the Hardy Boys bracket from Borstal. You know, <laughs> we had that sort of British thing where it was a, a con. But mm. what this is, is a sort of really well done knowing thing about what's fun <laughs> For wrestling fans to see. And also, what makes you realise, you sort of go, oh yeah, anyone can do that Kane act. Yeah. It's and actually really simple. Will there be a, uh, a, a Black Isaac Yankum? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there should be. There should be. I mean, that... If we're going to follow that to, the, to its nth I, degree. I have no problem as well with those tribute things. When they are done in a way that you go, I don't know why that's funny, but yeah. it is. And I think it's funny because he's not called something like Cone. He, you know, no, like yeah, snow yeah, cone. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's funny is he's just gone, I'm blue cane. And <laughs> a colour in front of an existing franchise yeah. or brand. Yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah. Very funny. Um, I, I have read a little bit about who it's believed that wrestler is. Um, and I don't think it's even worth talking about because I think there is that thing of this is just funny that he just exists as Blue Kane. Yeah. There's no point going, oh, well, he used to do this and, you know, he was that and everything. He's found what he's doing. Yeah. And it's magic. So let's enjoy it. Yeah, completely. Yeah. The the thing that I was really gutted about was I did think <laughs> about going to that show and I got put off by the Pine Grapple pun. <laughs> that annoyed me. But I was also tired. And yes. There are those funny moments as a wrestling fan where sometimes you don't bother going to a show and it turns out that show is probably the most important British show of last be. What you need is a little packet of um, illegal speed yeah. on your uh, bookshelf that when you're feeling absolutely knackered mm. and there's a show in town that you kind of want to go and see but you're too tired, just know that by virtue of the fact that you couldn't go and see it because you were tired yeah. meant that um, it's going to be an absolute... Slobber knocker. Yeah, I know you were tired. Did you take some of that speed and go to that show? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what did you see? Blue cane, blue cane. <laughs> he wasn't even on. Doctor, he needs to be sectioned. There's <laughs> <laughs> a guy called Bert Angle. <laughs> Rubbish. Um, uh, this is the box uh, of <laughs> AEW trading cards yeah. that we are going to be uh, breaking open uh, on air. I've got really into watching people opening trading cards. I've got, I've got a spe the special camera. Oh, it's so uh, good. And for some reason... Uh, the, the, the frame rate is very low. That's and I, I think it's because you've got a very long USB cable. But that's also good in case there's valuable cards in there. Yes. And that means I can slip them out yep, before the camera noticing. will pick them up. So What's even better about this is this is AEW's 2021 trading card series. This is um, the first of the AEW cards. Lots of rookie cards in here, Pete. Right, okay. Almost worthless. <laughs> Almost worthless. So this is pre uh, CM Punk. Pre this is like yeah everyone at the start. Yeah, of the everything. most expensive card found in this was a one of one Kenny Omega uh, autograph. Right, and it sold for just over a thousand dollars. The rest of them are absolutely <laughs> worthless. worthless. So the chances of us finding something pleasant, yeah, uh, and uh, to our bank accounts uh, yeah. in this is almost uh, tiny. Yeah, even smaller than that. Even, because yeah. you can buy hobby boxes that have guaranteed autographs and things. In, right, but they took a long time shipping from America so didn't bother okay, okay. this one it's just like basically what you'd get at the news agent does it have bubblegum no. <laughs> no no bubblegum no. right okay no. yeah. uh, are you right. talking about the 2016 <laughs> British wrestler bubblegum no I mean well, he's not in there either I mean <laughs> <laughs> so he'd never signed with AEW um, let's put on Pete uh, once you got the camera on yeah I thought it was there he is no worries no worries ah uh, ah uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is exactly what people think YouTube streams are like. Yeah, it is. Oh, here it we is. go. It's important that we keep like a clear line between our our card world, bro. Yeah. And our, if you like, our, world our WrestleMania, 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 WrestleMania stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, you know, we don't want to pollute one with the other. And also, right. if one becomes really successful, then we can just peel away. <laughs> um, so I thought we should, like, have a proper co- like outfit so that people know we're... We're in card mode. Yeah. Card bro mode. Yeah. It's it card bro mode. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so these card bro guys, mm. they just... They just unpack cards on the internet. Two different types. So there are some who are fans, and that you'll you'll sit with Logan Paul, and you'll go. Yes, I bought a. uh, There'll be these weird men. There's a a show on Netflix called Golden Antiques or something, or Golden Auctions. Yeah, and he's a big collectibles trader, and one of the things is cards. Mm. And he will get a you know 1993. Heroes box or, or or a Pokemon box, and mm. they will go through an original one, and they'll open them and just go, "Shit, man, there was nothing in there." <laughs> but he sort of sits there, kind of quite spookily, having sold a you know Logan Paul a you know a hundred and ten grand box, mm. which they then open, and he'll go, hey, "This is all the fun of collecting cards." That's the <laughs> the one side. The other right. side is there are a lot of people who open cards, but they would go. You can pick a number. So I will buy a big set of cards. I will open them. And, you know, you get that card that is your number. Right. They can be a bit controversial. Right. Because if you get expensive cards, they try and take them out, don't they? They try and take them out. Um, What, on stream? How do they do that? They do it in Netflix and and get rumbled. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I've been watching those two Uh, things. So I thought we'd bridge it by being both, like, you know, not professional. Mm. But at the same time, a little bit of the sort of slimy unsettliness <laughs> of the people who do it professionally. Okay, cool. Okay? So it's just right. a very, it's a very simple look. It's a very simple look indeed. I didn't, oh, I can't get one my, yeah. Go for me, uh, oh, should, yeah, should we put, the, yeah, it's probably the, probably the order in which that's supposed to go on, I suppose, isn't it? Hey. 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 <laughs> so today we're going to be breaking that. <laughs> Box of, they never know what it is either. They never go, oh, we're going to be breaking a box of 2021 um, upper limit. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they always go, we're going to be breaking a box of uh, CSs. They probably can't see because they're, they're wearing sunglasses indoors, I would say. Probably, 2021 uh, trading cards upper deck. And they read a lot of the stuff that's really unimportant as well. They'll go on the back <laughs> and they'll sort of just go, oh, let's connect. That's uh, got the. Uh, it's got the Twitter symbol there. You can, they really do that. Right. It's, it, it's mental. I watch these and I always go, oh, this would be fun. This would be like a vicarious way of uh, of doing this, you know, financially ruinous hobby. Yeah. Um, but they're always rubbish. <laughs> and you can... Okay, bro, here we go. <laughs> okay, bro, here we go. Here we go. Okay, bro, here okay, we go. Okay, bro. Uh, there's <laughs> eight, eight packets, eight cards a packet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that books out as 41 cards. That's the sort of thing I get wrong. Well. Yeah, Noisy. okay, yeah, nice, yeah. Let's just, hey, let's listen to the uh, the pop. <laughs> Kegman says, uh, wait, where did Mark and Pete go? I say that the pop. Hey, we're just like... We're just his exactly, friends. Yeah, they're friends. Thank you. Yeah. I couldn't even be bothered to do the line. <laughs> I was just... Right. Imagine we've done it anyway. Well, yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a pop. Oh, yeah, it okay. smells like 2021, baby. Yeah, yeah, oh, man. in the middle okay. of COVID. So let's, uh, <laughs> Don't smell it. Hey, this is something I really like. I really appreciate. This is great feature you see in Upper Deck. They got a little bit of card in the middle there that splits them, <laughs> it into, splits them into two packs. Four and four. That's nice. the sort of thing that stops you feeling ripped off. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here, guys. Right. Bearing in mind, the, for some reason, the uh, camera has a very low frames per second. So uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, going nice and slow uh, on, the, on, the, <laughs> on the old camera. This feels really wrong. It feels like it's d- d- sort of yeah, opening it's something like... up a bit. <laughs> you like it's that? Here. Who's, who's at the top there? Who's see. this? Oh, okay now. Right. Here we go. Pete. Got the cards. I'm going to show just you go. the cards one by yeah. one. Is it signed? It's not signed. It's Ricky Starks. He's got his top off. He's <sighs> kind of half doing one thing and half doing another. Hey, Pete. Is it signed? Uh, no, it's not. It's the Jurassic Express. Uh, they're having a nice time, though. Um, I wouldn't say they weren't having a nice time. Hey, Pete, is it signed? <sighs> Again, it's not. It's a. It's Jungle Boy. I can see it from it, the back. It's a Jungle Boy, but it's a special one. It says main features, and it looks like he's been attacked by Just Stop Oil. This might be a, a subset. All oh, right, but of the Mark features. But it's Who's whack. Mark features? <laughs> Mark features. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's a, it's a Dax Harwood, but it's kind of slightly shiny, is like his head. It's signed. 
It's not signed. Do you want me to sign these? <laughs> it sounds like you just did it for the signing mark. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? SCU. That's SCU. That's SCU. This hat is actually making it quite hard to, to do this, to be honest. Yeah, they're just hanging out. They're a tag team. Um, they've got the shirts off. They're nice and oiled up. They look good. It's bullshit. Is bullshit. this signed? It's not signed. I mean, there are, they, they fill up quite a lot of cards in one pack. Yeah, so how much would they retail for each individual pack? Well, I pay... He's stalling because he's hiding that last Picard and it's worth a million pounds. It's the Bucks, it's man. It's the Bucks, man. They fucking rock. Tear them up. <laughs> Tear them up. <laughs> Ruining CM Punk's career like that. There are. I'm going to throw you a pack as well because, I mean, Woo-hoo! that's part of the fun. Yeah. Um, th- oh, good. Good stuff. Is it signed? It's not signed, <laughs> but it's... Tony Giovanni. Oh, yes! Look nice. at him on the screen. Look at him. He's got a tucked one hand into his suit. He's wearing a nice blue, uh, powder blue. Uh, uh, not powder blue. What was that? Poster pit blue. It's a bit like collecting employee photos <laughs> from like it's a like company. Employee, that you went to. employee of the month. Yeah. What does it say on the back? In addition to his role as an experienced commentator for the team, uh, he also works behind the scenes as a senior producer. I mean, geez, oh, good God! This doesn't stop being exciting. No, do you want to do your? Uh, do you want to do your one? And you can. No, it's not a sign. Uh, it's not it is one. a piece. I've got to take my bro glasses off. Hang on. Take your bro glasses uh. off. This is worth at least three pounds. <laughs> now I've got to put my real ones on. <laughs> Congratulations! Whoa, you have received a trading card with. Memorabilia. Memorabilia. It is certified by the Upper Deck Company as having been worn <laughs> by the featured wrestler. <laughs> oh no, some dirty old pants all sliced up. We hope you enjoy this piece of AEW history as we continue to keep you as close as you can get. I don't like this. Enjoy your memorabilia card. Like this new voice you've got. Are you ready for the wrestler? Uh, yes. Well, depending oh, on, it yeah. might be someone who might have dirty kecks. I don't want to be horrible. Let me feel it. It's slightly rubbery. It's highly rubbery. Like oh. it's been, like it's had to be vulcanized for protection. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Maybe protection from the outside from people <laughs> lunging. <laughs> I think we have a little bit of pant. Pant? And yeah. I think. A gusset. It's a bit of gusset. Could be a bit of gusset. It depends. Even if they, they probably wouldn't do the, the, the middle gusset, they do the side gussets. Yeah. Okay. Fair. We have got. The Butcher's Knickers! <laughs> the Butcher's Knickers! Yay! <laughs> oh, that's, this is better than anything it could, we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so hang fire. This is like when you um, bought me Asuka's pants. Yes. Yeah. They were very clear that they weren't pants. Yeah. This, they are not so clear about. There's nothing no. here that says these aren't the Butcher's pants. Let me feel the Butcher's... Um... The good thing about the butcher, rather than having it's it is, it's spongy, isn't it? Pant, isn't it? Yeah. And now these ones feel heavy. Hello, it's Jim Ross here. Oh, oh, a Jim Ross card. I'm a Jim Ross man. I sometimes he also looks like he's having his school photograph done. He does, and I sometimes think, you know, when I get a Jim Ross card, I think the sad thing is there's a little kid somewhere who'd probably love to have that card in their collection. <laughs> What's this photo of a 68-year-old man you got <laughs> up on your wall? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Cody Rhodes. Hikaru Shida again. Why have we got so many Hikaru Shida cards? Look, if you work for Upper Deck or whatever yeah. this company is, j- stop taking photographs of Hikaru Shida. <laughs> you weird Yeah, all. fucking weird. Give Anna J looking for uh, crying out loud. Guys, we just went through the uh, trading card set. It's beautiful. I love the canvas yeah. prints. I love the uh, little like memorabilia and things. Guys, there are 144 cards, and of them, 116 are just oh pictures God. of Hikaru Shida. Yeah. Yeah. On, on this lovely one, uh, that's a, a fake uh, Oli Wrestling uh, magazine with Moxley on the front, looking. He's, he's looking a bit like coquettish, a little bit like. Ooh, oh, uh, hello. How are you doing? Little. Nice uh, to see you guys here. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know you were going to put me on a card. <laughs> uh, we've got our first Kenny Omega card. Yay! There he is. Is it signed? No. No. So, well done, everyone. Um, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely justified my decision to keep on buying these boxes. I said this before. It's tax deductible. Where are you going to put these in your little uh, in your little shelf? I think I'm going to add them to one of the many boxes that are hidden in my store that I haven't visited for over a year. Good stuff. <laughs> um, let- quite a lot of cards. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. That's and, quite a lot of cards. And, and uh, if you are a card collector, do you, do you keep all of these things? I don't think there's a market for them, but I simply will. Oh, cause this, was, this would have been packed in 2020. 
That's when oh, it, I was about to say, is that pre-COVID era? I mean, it would have. I mean, it would have been around about the time. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Oh no, it's twenty twenty one. No, but they, but they sometimes California. they sometimes yeah. like like put yeah. the date forward. There's every chance this is pre-COVID era. Packaging printed in Canada. Everything's packaging in this. It's just all packaging. Really, hey, this is this is actually reversing the vaccine. You know, like <laughs> you know, like when the Chinese go down to shipwrecks to get that that pure aluminium. That's, yeah, or pure, pure steel or whatever that's un, oh. unbothered by. Oh, this is what it was like before. Yeah, the war karate, uh, you've got a hold of everything. I feel like oh. I'm stopping being sterile. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this seems like now? This seems like a bit where we're going to both go out and like a wrestler's going to creep in and go, shh. <laughs> <laughs> None of that's going to happen. None of that is. Everyone's going to be waiting. It's not going to happen. <laughs>